In the name of the glorious Trinity, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. Glory be to the everlasting mercies which sent you to us, O Christ, the light of the world and the life of all. Give us wisdom by your law and enlighten our impulses by your knowledge. Sanctify our souls by your truth and grant that we may be obedient to your words and may fulfill your commandments at every hour. O you who enlightens the rational with the knowledge of your greatness, do enlighten, O my Lord, our thoughts, that we may meditate upon your holy and divine scriptures at all times, O Lord of all, Father and Son and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Psalm 119 verse 9 reads, How does a young man purify his way? And he gives us the answer, to keep your commandments. It is an honor for me to have a special, very special guest, very dear to the heart. Um, uh, my brother, Core Bishop uh, Givargis Rashu, known as Father G., from the St. Mary's Assyrian Church of the East Parish in uh, Los Angeles, and also the uh, president of the National Executive Committee, NEC. I will refer to him as Rabi. Rabi means teacher. This is how we refer to our uh, spiritual fathers, the priest, our Reverend Fathers Rabi. Rabi, welcome. Great to, great to have you on with us. Thank you, dear brother. I am humbly honored. Honestly, I'm humbly honored to be part of this uh, wonderful program, which I have heard so much about. Uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you uh, for your service, uh, dear brother. Thank you for what you do. And um, I pray that the Lord will guide us through this uh, talk, through this mm -hmm. interview, mm -hmm. that uh, we may glorify him in all that we say. I mean, at all times. We are recording uh, at the National Youth Conference, uh, the North American National, uh, no, it's a North America Youth Conference, the 35th Youth Conference. We are in Sacramento. So this uh, program or this episode was recorded when we were at the National, Execu oh, the National uh, Youth Conference. Rabi, please um, just enlighten the listeners a little about the National Executive Committee. Uh, the National Executive Committee uh, consists of 16 members. Um, it is uh, a committee representing all four dioceses in the United States and Canada, which we're calling North America. Mm -hmm. And uh, the executive branch of it, which is the president, vice president, and uh, secretary and treasurer, are appointed in this way. The bishops choose the president, and the president chooses his vice president, his cabinet, his vice president, his secretary, and his treasurer mm -hmm. with the approval of the bishops. Mm -hmm. uh, and then each diocese, each bishop appoints three representatives from the respectable diocese. And that's how uh, the 12 and the four can uh, combine together the 16 members of the national executive or the executive committee of uh, the youth uh, for North America. Mm -hmm. We know that the, the 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 foundation of the youth association was founded by the late His Holiness Mardanha of blessed memory. Yes. When did NEC actually come into fruition, or who founded, and how did it? How was it established? The way the way the NEC started, it was a uh, a fruit or a branch or a product of the youth conference itself. Mm -hmm. The youth conference started 37 years ago, even mm -hmm. though it's the 35th because we had missed a couple of years. 37 years ago, by some youth members who had, uh, we had, as you say, the uh, late patriarch had established the youth association within parishes. And as these uh, youth parishes were growing, some of the youth leaders within these parishes decided to get together, by back then called, calling it a convention, mm -hmm. a youth convention. And their aim was, their goal was, just to connect with other youth of other parishes. So it started small, of course. It started small. It was a weekend thing. It was a Saturday, Sunday kind of thing. It started small. 
with I remember the first one being part of it. It was uh, 80 participants. Um, and then it grew into a national conference and then a few years ago into the North American Conference, mm -hmm. which consists of Canada and United States parishes. A few years back, during still the time of his the late his uh, the late His Holiness uh, Mardancha, the Patriarch, uh, Mardancha the Fourth, uh, it was during his time when a an official committee was established, and uh, uh, as you remember, it was uh, His Holiness now His mm -hmm. Grace then Mar mm -hmm. became the first president. Yes, uh, you and I were both part of that committee, mm -hmm. and then uh, for seven years. Uh, he led as president uh, until right before his election as patriarch. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then the second uh, president came into office, and uh, that's how it formed itself. Mm -hmm. it, I believe it's still building itself, forming mm -hmm. itself, mm -hmm. uh, uh, as we experience uh, new paths. Uh, so, but thank glory be to God, it, it's I mean. it's in a good place right now, mm -hmm. heading in the right. Direction. I began with Psalm 119, verse 9. Uh, how does a youth or a young man purify his way? But um, And the answer is to keep your commandments. Amen. What are the steps and what are the strives that um, the National Executive Committee has engaged itself into on, an, on a, a diocese level and on a, a Northern America uh, level? What are some of the um, programs or what are some of the the endeavors that the, the NEC has engaged in to bring this verse into fruition in the lives of the youth? The NEC plays the role of the older brother, for example. Uh, big brother. And, big brother. Encouraging, uh, strengthening, mm -hmm. guiding, walking along mm -hmm. the younger brother. Mm -hmm. So uh, in many ways, we look at the local level parish, uh, youth parishes, uh, within the parishes, the youth on the local levels, we look at them as the younger brother, and uh, and the older brother's duty is to guide, protect, strengthen, talk to, st establish relationship with the younger brother, yeah. and that's how I feel the NEC has been to the local level youth uh, committees, and uh, and and in that sense, uh, having a conference where it's looked upon as a reward for the local parishes, for the members, looked upon as a reward for them to, if you are part of us, you are rewarded with something big, something mm -hmm. nice. You belong to a, a larger group. You belong to a larger family. And uh, we've seen that uh, success uh, throughout the years that uh, this conference has been. I'm sure there's been a lot of um, struggles and, and trials and challenges. Of course. Um, can you name a few and what the NEC is doing to um, overcome? Just like any journey, it's a journey of life. Mm -hmm. And as we live through the journey, we experience difficulties, challenges, uh, because we live in a fallen world. Mm -hmm. There are temptations. It's a war. And so just like in our normal life, we face these challenges. We face them also as a group, as a family. And uh, some of these challenges, for example, is losing uh, our young uh, to, to the world. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, the theme of this conference is not of this world. Why mm -hmm. did we talk about it? Why are we establishing these lectures and the themes? And Because uh, we... We want to arise that that faith, that uh, that love towards Christ, which is our true life, mm -hmm. and we have to be able to show these young people the difference between the world, mm -hmm. the fallen world that we live in, and the world God created us for. And so, of course, it's a great challenge because it's much easier. the The road is wide, and and it's easy for people to walk in it. You know, the the road mm -hmm. of the fallen world. And so, to come to a young, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen year old, and uh, persuade them or show them the truth, it takes a lot of work. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's not easy, but 
that's what parents do all the time, right? Is steer their kids in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, the youth, the NEC's job is, to be that older brother and to overcome those challenges and to, to speak their language. Mm -hmm. you know, because some of the challenges are, are the culture shock, for example. Our parents, our culture, our church, our liturgies were done, done in different times, in different uh, play, play, in different places of the world. Through a, it was formed in a different culture, and now our children are in a totally different place, mm -hmm. different language, different culture, different challenges. Different world. It just seems night and day. Mm -hmm. And to bring them to something that's, that dates back a thousand years is not easy. Mm -hmm. So you have to find a tool of today mm -hmm. to help them see why, why a prayer was created uh, in the seventh century uh, this way, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to be able to paint that picture for them and make it easy for them to accept. And I, that's one of the challenges I see in the work that we do. I mean, and, and, and the themes of the, um, the conferences themselves, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Robbie, they are um, presented in, in a different perspective uh, within the church. I believe the church fathers, the liturgy, the, the sacraments, is that helping the youth when they, you know, the theme is not of this world and we have a, a presenter that's presenting this theme from the perspective of the liturgy or the sacraments? Is there a, does it, does it affect their thinking and understanding and enlighten them? I believe uh, because the presenters, which, you know, with, with due respect, are mm -hmm. doing a great job, mm -hmm. the presenter is bringing, for example, St. Ephraim the Great, mm -hmm. okay? Third, fourth century, uh, sixteen hundred years ago. Yeah. Okay, uh, one of the great fathers, of renowned, the very quite of course, renowned throughout yes. the whole church. Mm -hmm. Now, many young people hearing the name Saint Ephraim well, wouldn't relate; to, they wouldn't know what it is. But when when explained in their language, mm -hmm. okay, in today's terms, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, one of the presenters explained St. Ephraim in such a simple way where they were at awe. Well, they were at awe. They, mm. well, we didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So, mm. you know, uh, not bring simplest, simplicity, simplicity yeah. in the terms, mm -hmm. simplicity in the way it's presented, in the application. Mm -hmm. yep. So it really is, is helping. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, Paul said, you know, when, when, when you're young, this is it's the kind milk. of food you do, mm -hmm. and when you're older, this is the kind of food you take. So that's, it's really based on that uh, biblical thought. Apart from our young man meeting our young sisters and some um, receiving the holy matrimony, um, you know, some people uh, approached me and said, Nabi, you know, let's call a spade a spade. There are a few um, young men here who actually are looking to find someone to... You know, wrong with to that. get acquainted it's with and maybe one day God willing Allah to be married apart from those success stories which we have a few um, to, in this conference we have the children of a couple that met at one of the mm -hmm. conferences mm -hmm. what are some of the other success stories from the National Executive, Executive Committee I believe our number one mission and goal has been throughout the years uh, especially in the later years where we understood more our mission mm -hmm. has been to bring these young people to Christ. Uh, and I believe we're working much harder at it now than before. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, I, I remember 37 years ago, we didn't understand that concept much. We were all young. Yeah. But now uh, that those who are young have become fathers and grandfathers, yes, have learned throughout the experiences the need of what the mission should be and how it should be steered. And so bringing them to Christ has been our number one mission. And mm -hmm. I believe, I, I see success. Mm -hmm. I personally see success. Mm -hmm. And I hear from parents, from you themselves, testimonies uh, of how life are changing. You know, they're coming up to me and saying, you know, so-and-so presenter said this three years ago. It impacted my life. Yes. Uh, it made, it changed my decision. Mm -hmm. So, that's the greatest thing, 
that you know we see the change uh, in people's life, the how it, they're being touched and how they're changing paths and uh, choosing right, uh, and also uh, many of the clergy that we have today are product of the youth. I mean, His right? Holiness, His Holiness, the Patriarch of the Church. Well, I remember, you know, at one time, before he became president of the youth, he was a member of the youth. He was a young yes. member of the youth and became part of the youth and uh, chose, you know, I'm sure it was God's choosing, but chose to serve the Lord. Amen. And now, you know, look how blessed the church mm -hmm. is to have such a patriarch. Mm -hmm. And many of the deacons you see today serving, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, are product of the youth and, and Presenting yeah. very well too, and you and I are product of the youth, right? So. I am Zaman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gone out we're of not, days. We're not youth anymore, <laughs> but we're product of the youth. Speak for yourself, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, you mentioned, mentioned something very important that it sometimes takes a hymn, a verse. It brought to mind John chapter four, verse eighteen: "The lady at the well, Christ engaged in a conversation with her, mm -hmm. but when he said to her." You have five husbands, and the one you whom I'm now is not your husband. Touched her heart. It mm -hmm. was a rebuke, and she went and converted a whole, whole city yeah. back to Christ. And and um, and that is so evident in in um, you know you don't. I always say you'll never have a hundred percent success rate, but what God wants and permits His will, will there will be a, a success rate. I know that there is another ministry currently under the. Um, uh, the auspices of the NEC, but eventually it will be a new ministry, Salt and Light. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you have been um, quite engaged in uh, establishing it. Tell us, tell us a little bit about that, Bobby. The Salt and Light is a product of a need. What we saw as, as uh, servants in the youth ministry, well, we saw that when our young were reaching the ages of 25, 26, uh, they were not engaging in our programs as youth anymore because they felt they're older, they're getting married, they're having children. And so uh, the need uh, was to establish a ministry that they can belong to, that they can be part of. And uh, speaking, you know, uh, discussing these issues at our NEC, what should we do? These are, you know, these are our members still and part of us, and now they're not. And so this discussion brought about this thought of having establishing a new ministry and uh, it's called uh, the salt and light the association of salt and light of the Syrian church of the east and the reason it's called that you know because uh, of what the lord called us to be the salt and light and so upon this verse this ministry is established and the, the mission of the this ministry is to to have these young people between the ages of 25 to 40 become the salt and light uh, that uh, the Lord has called us to be. And so um, now we have committees established in Los Angeles, in Phoenix uh, uh, or Arizona area, Phoenix, Gilbert, Chandler, th those areas. We have one established for the Chicago uh, area, Chicago and the suburbs, of course, and we are in process of establishing, uh, with your help, dear mm -hmm. brother, the one in California, mm -hmm. uh, or we might have two, depending on the decision of the diocese mm -hmm. and the need. And then uh, I was just speaking to the Bishop of Canada. Uh, I believe in October, if I'm not mistaken, we'll be uh, heading to Canada and establishing uh, the one for Canada. And uh, the, But the main goal of that ministry will be on the Word of God. Amen. Establishing the Word of God in their life, in their mind, in their deeds, and in their thoughts. And uh, so, built, because they're new parents, they are professionals, they are leaders, and we want them to live according to the Word of God and become that light and salt of the world. The Word of God being the food to the soul Amen. and the light to the path. Thank you, Rabbi. I know you're busy. Um, and again, I, I will remind that this uh, session was recorded during the conference and we're running around like headless chooks, do they say? No, no. <laughs> the, the youth are doing an amazing job. They are. An amazing job. Yeah. And I want to I wanna take this opportunity to thank you, Rabbi, for your hard work, not just for this conference, mm -hmm. but throughout the years. You've been a dear brother. You've been a, a true servant. And... Uh, 
you're you have no idea how many lives you've impacted as a priest. Honestly, mm -hmm. many young people come to me and tell me uh, of of uh, the influence you've had on their life. And uh, thank you for serving. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your dedication. The church needs you. The church needs people like you. Um, yeah, you you have honestly you are the light and the salt that the Lord calls you to be Glory to God. within our church and the, your committee has done an outstanding job for this particular conference uh, these young people these volunteers the hours they put in the, the sleepless nights they go through these days this is the love that Christ called us to mm -hmm. have for one another mm -hmm. this is how they're showing their love to their peers, to their brothers and sisters. You can see it in their service, carrying these water cases, mm -hmm. driving here and there, spending not only money from their pocket, not only their time, not only their effort, but their gifts. Many mm -hmm. of them are professionals. Mm -hmm. They yes. bring their gifts and uh, use them to uh, mm -hmm. manage and run these conferences. And they're doing a remarkable job. Okay. Uh, many of them... Uh, might hire somebody to do many of the things that they're doing now. Yes, yes. So we're grateful and thankful for all of you. God bless you. God be with you. Uh, we will pray with our feeble mind, uh, with our feeble soul for your success and, uh, and for the Lord. To be glorified to, always. To be glorified, but for the Lord to reward you. Amen. Because no matter you know what we say, it's limited. It's, it's perishable. In this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. With this, with this but the Lord, will he will reward mm -hmm. you. And, and glory be to his fault. Thank you, Ravi. Likewise with yourself. Um, you. We met uh, in the year 2006. was my first conference attendance. Oh, it was at Los Angeles. I remember when I got off the bus, you came and we embraced each other as though we knew. Uh, we Sometimes we don't see eye to eye because we're human beings. <laughs> but the love we have for one another and the zeal that you have, Ravi. By the way, I forgot to mention... Five minutes with – it's not five minutes. It's usually 10 to 15 minutes. <laughs> five minutes with Father G is the um, Facebook Live uh, session Rabbi uh, presents. It's all from the scriptures, and uh, I've heard, uh, uh, you know, many, many great uh, um, uh, feedback. And at the end of the day, Rabbi, we, are, we always say we are unworthy servants. Amen. We truly are unworthy servants of Jesus Christ. Amen. And he uses – truly he uses the weak and the fool to put to shame. And that's what away. amazes yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. God chose me? Yeah. Wow. Who, me? 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 <laughs> me? Really? That's what, who was it? What Moses said that, didn't he? Who is yeah. me? I'm yeah. not, I, I have a stutter. How can unbelievable. I, yeah. Honestly, unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, Thank you, Ravi. Thank you so much. And may the Lord's blessings and guidance and protection be upon your, you and your flock. Um, the amazing job that you are doing. And all those uh, brother uh, fathers, reverend fathers that maybe are listening to this, that are here, uh, you know, they're uh, participating in the in the conference um may god be glorified in all that we do and we say so that he's and i always say this so that we can hear those amazing words mm. from the lips of our lord and savior jesus christ mm. well done good and faithful servant mm. enter the kingdom of your heavenly mm. father praise and glory be to his holy name now and at all times and forever and ever amen, amen. amen. thank you We hope you enjoyed this week's message. Please don't forget to rate and review this podcast and share with your friends and family. For any future topic suggestions or to give us detailed feedback, please visit our link in the show notes, linktr.ee forward slash double-edged sword. Until next time, God bless you all.